Hello, this is Arthur Hill, Senior Technical Analyst with StockCharts.com. This is a video tutorial on writing scans. Today, we're going to go over some advanced topics. We're going to show you the different comparative operators. We're going to show you how to scan for weekly and monthly values, how to offset the dates, and how to use the arithmetic operators and functions. Let's get started. So if you want to take your scans to the next level, you need to watch these videos, you need to read the documentation regarding stank scans, and you need to study the tutorials. We've got a wealth of information on this website. And so if I just go to the top right hand corner and click that little hourglass to search, I'm going to just search for the term writing scans. And I will get a link to a support article on writing scans. And you can also see some tutorials below that. So if I click on that link, I'll get a detailed article on how to write scans. And I'm going to go down to the bottom. You see on the right, the table of contents. And I'm going to click on additional resources. And there are a whole bunch of articles that will help you further your ability to write scans. Everything you need can be found there. So we're going to start with the comparison operators and you can see some text comparisons there is, is not, contains, not contains, starts with, ends with, and we also have the number comparisons there. And those are equals, less than, less than or equal to, greater than, greater than or equal to, is not equal to, and the X for crosses above. So here we've got a clause, group is Dow 65. And that clause, of course, is enclosed with brackets on either side. We have an expression group. We have the comparison operator is, and it's Dow 65, the 65 stocks which comprise the Dow Industrials, Dow Transports, and Dow Utilities. Now in the next expression, I want to leave out the utilities. So I've got group is not. Dow Utility, D-J-U-A. And you can see I've got a comment just above. And when you put two forward slashes in front of a phrase, that will be ignored by the scan engine. And that's just for your personal comments. And if you want to add anything to a scan, you can also go down to the scan components box below and you can select one of these. This is where I selected the Dow 30 industrial say and click add to add that to your scan. So here I've got another example. I'm looking for the type is a stock and the group is not an ETF. So I don't want any ETFs in this scan. And then you can see on line six here, I want the simple moving average of volume. And there's that comparison greater than or equal to 100,000 shares. And I put a little comment just above so I know what I'm writing just below. And then I want the close to be less than or equal to $10. So in this scan, I'm looking for low price stocks. So perhaps the most important comparison operator that we're going to use is crosses, the X. And I've got an example of the crosses comparison operator down below there. So first of all, I want to see that the MACD line crosses above zero. And I've got that written MACD line, and then I've got crosses above with the X and zero. So that'll only show stocks with volume greater than 100,000 with a close below 10 with a MACD cross above zero. Now keep in mind that the X here means crosses above. And so if we want to reverse that, if we want the MACD line to cross below zero, then we have to reverse the order here and make this zero crosses above the MACD line there. And so that'll be the equivalent of MACD crossing below zero. That would obviously be a bearish scan. So by default, the scan engine just assumes you're talking about daily data. If you write MACD line, it's going to assume that is the daily MACD line. But we can easily change that by prefacing MACD line with weekly or monthly. So in this example, I've got the weekly MACD line crossing above zero. 
And then in the next scan code line, I've got the monthly RSI being above 50. And then in the last line, I've got the weekly, the 10 week moving average crossing above the 40 week moving average. And you can mix and match daily, weekly, and monthly on a single scan. The scan engine is really easy to understand. We're using normal, common, everyday terms. And so if you want to offset the date, then you can use terms like today's or yesterday's or in days ago. So if you want to do three days ago, you just write three days ago. If you want this week's version versus last week's, you just write both of those. The same with this month and last month. It's very easy to write and to understand. So in this example, you can see I want today's close to be greater than the close five days ago. And I simply write close is greater than five days ago close. Then I've got a weekly version here. I want this week's RSI reading to be greater than last week's RSI reading. In other words, RSI is rising. And then I can do it for monthly MACD. And in this case, I want the MACD line for this month to be greater than the MACD line for last month. In other words, it is rising. Now the arithmetic operators are good, say, when we want to see something move by a certain percent, for instance, volume. And in this example here, you can see that I want today's volume to be one and a half times yesterday's volume. So I've got volume and the scan engine assumes today's daily volume is greater than or equal to. And then I've got yesterday's volume multiplied by 1.5. So that will ensure that today's volume is higher, at least by 50% than yesterday's volume. We could also use an arithmetic operator to scan for a gap. And so in this example, I want the open and the low to be 1% higher than yesterday's high. And that means there will have been a gap because the open and the low are above that level. So I've got today's open is greater than 1.01 times yesterday's high. So that would mean 1% more than yesterday's high. And then in order to ensure that you didn't have a move down into the gap zone, I would want today's low also to be 1% higher than yesterday's high. And finally, we're going to look at the arithmetic functions. Now, I'm not going to go over all of these, but you can read them in the writing scans tutorial. We're going to look at the min and max functions as well as down here, you can see we're going to look at the streak function there. So this example shows a 52 week high. I want the current high to be greater than the highest high of the prior 52 weeks. And in order to do that, first I start with this week's high and then I add my comparative operator greater than. And then I want it to be greater than last week's. And here's the key, the max, which is the highest high of the last 52 weeks, the max high of the last 52 weeks. And so if this week's high is greater than that, then we will have a 52 week high. And we can use min for 52 week low. So in this example, I want this week's low. And then I've got my less than comparative operator to be less than last week's minimum 52 week low. The lowest low of the prior 52 weeks, well, I want this week's low to be below that to make a new 52 week low. And finally, I'm gonna look for a streak of five or more down days in a row. And we have an arithmetic function there, streak down, and I want the daily close, and I want it to be down greater than or equal to five days. So if you're looking for some sort of oversold condition short term, you could use this arithmetic function. All right, this concludes the video on advanced topics for writing scans. Be sure to check out our other video tutorials for more information. Thanks very much for tuning in. Good luck and good scanning.